We are now going to be taking a look at piecewise functions. A piecewise function means you take a function and you cut a piece of it off. It's that simple. So this first one we're looking at is f of x equals x squared. The only piece we're going to take from x, we're going to take a piece from it. And that piece has to do with any x value less than zero. Let's review some mathematical relations. This means less than, this means less than or equal to, this means greater than, this means greater than or equal to. This means equals, this means not equal, and this means approximately equal. I put kind of equal, but so you need to know these symbols as we move on to this lesson. Let's practice reading a piecewise function. So you need to know how to read it in order to solve it. So f of x means function. Uh, and this is your function itself, f of x equals x, so it could be x squared, ln x, whatever. This semicolon means when or whenever. So f of x is going to be equal to x whenever, so there's a stipulation here, whenever x is bigger than 1. And this part on the right, to the right of the semicolon, is called your interval. And so that me this means f of x is equal to x whenever x is greater than 1. So notice it doesn't say anything about f of x is equal to whenever it's less than 1 or equal to 1. So there won't be a graph there whenever x is less than 1 or equal to 1. There's only going to be a graph whenever x is bigger than 1. That's why we call it the interval. The logical conclusion is that we ignore what f of x looks like whenever x is less than or equal to 1. There will be no graph there. It'll be like a ghost town. We're only going to focus on when x is greater than 1 because that's what the interval told us to focus on. Let us proceed to graph the function. So example one formally, graph f of x equals x whenever x is bigger than one. Let's follow these steps to get the right answer. Step one is to circle the interval values. So it's, there's, these intervals are gonna look different, but look, notice there's only one number here. So I'm, only, I'm gonna circle that number that's part of my interval that's to the right of the semicolon. These are the numbers given in the interval. Okay, step one is complete. We've circled that number. Step two, or numbers, depending on how big the interval is. Step two is to plug those interval values into the function. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna plug it into my function, which is just x in this case. It could be x squared, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it into my function and voila, f of one equals one. It's really that simple. It's not always that simple, but in this case it is. So my point is going to be one comma one. That leads me to step three, write out that point. So I plugged in one, of, one into my function, I got one back, therefore my point is one comma one. Step four, now that we've circled that number, we're gonna circle the relation. So this relation is what? It's greater than, right? Because it's uh, pointing to the right. So this means greater than. So why are we circling that? That leads us to step five. It will determine if the point that we found out in step three is a whole or a solid point. Now, if you remember, if it's less than, greater than, or not equal to, there's going to be a hole there. We learned that when we did rational functions. Or actually, I take that back. We learned that when we did number line. Okay, that might have been a long time for some of you guys. But for example, if, if x is greater than 1, then it can't be equal to 1, right? So there's going to be a hole there, not a solid point. There will be solid points if it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal. Notice all three of these have bars on the bottom. These do not have bars. So the point 1, 1 is going to be a whole because it's greater than, it's not greater than or equal to. Step six is to plot the points. So I will plot a whole at 1, 1, not a solid point. Okay, it's an, it's an important part of the graph though, so we need to, to put it there. Uh, step seven, determine additional points. The interval is your guide here. X is bigger than one. This means that you want to choose the X values two, three, four, etc. Not something less than one. Zero, negative one, negative two, etc. Um, now I put a note here. Three additional points is generally a safe bet. One or two sometimes works. I say always three. I know this is going to be a line, so I only actually need one or two afterwards. I know it's going to be a line because it's f of x equals x. So I'm going to plug in 2, which is bigger than 1, and 3, which is bigger than 1. And obviously f of 2 is 2 and f of 3 is 3 because the function is f of x equals x. Step 8 is going to be to plot those additional points. And guess what step 9 is? Connect the dots. I can't put my graph here at 1, 1 because it's a hole, but I certainly can go through the points and extend it forever. I know it's going to be a line 
because again it's f of x equals x. Now this is not, the final answer isn't a line is it? It's a ray. It's a line in the sense that it goes off to the up and to the right forever so you do want to put the arrow but it stops at 1 because it says x is greater than 1 so again notice there's no graph anywhere less than 1. There's no graph technically at 1 just a hole the only place that this exists is when x is greater than 1 and I'll even put that on here down here so you can see the only part that exists for the graph is whenever x is bigger than 1 that's it for this example folks if you have any other questions about it let me know